Welcome to Digital Asset News, taking top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, got some concerning news, but um, who knows? First up, 100 addresses own 83% of total Chainlink supply, but Link Marines don't mind too much. And I got to tell you, this is one of those articles that made me think pretty hard. Also, world's third largest pasta producer adopts VeChain and DNV GL's infection risk management solution. And the question really gets asked, how many other companies are going to have to do this because of the coronavirus? And lastly, Bitfinex list Cardano says more demand than ever before. And I gotta tell you, as a holder of Cardano, this is good news. But before we break into that, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. Today, it is August 8th. It is 8.30 at night. Not really too much going on. This is a late video. I had a lot of things happening today. So uh, here we are. It's going to be a little bit of a quicker video just to uh, get, the, get the cobwebs out. Let's see what's going on. So... Bitcoin just under 12, like an 11.7. It's up a whopping 0.8%. But hey, that is it is what it is. And thinking about 4.2, almost hitting that $400 barrier. It seems like that's the level of resistance, $400. If they can just kind of bust through that and hit some other key metrics, I think we'll be okay. XRP, 29 cents. Watch out. Tether is Tether. Bitcoin Cash, sure. And then Chainlink, this is the, the, the biggest thing of the day, is uh, already at that sixth spot. And I got to tell you, when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking to myself, First of all, that's an amazing run. So for all the Link Marines, the people who are holding it, congratulations. I hold it myself. And I actually posted up uh, something in the uh, community section about, hey, you know, I've been talking about Chainlink for quite some time. And uh, uh, this is one of those uh, those times when I'm actually happy with one of my one of my long term holds. Now, have I made mistakes in the past? Obviously, I think everybody on this channel knows that uh, I am not Nostradamus, and along the way, I've made many mistakes. But uh, you have to, you know, uh, sit back and celebrate for the times that when you actually uh, do make a good call and you say, you know what, this is going to do pretty well, and it has so far. Who knows what's going to happen tomorrow? I mean, look, it is cryptocurrency. Tomorrow, I could wake up and Chainlink could be number fifty. <laughs> I have no idea, but uh, I mean, from what the past performance is, I think it's going to do pretty well. So in that post, I actually talked about if you if you missed out, because I said the first rule of cryptocurrency is don't FOMO. Second rule of cryptocurrency is don't FOMO. So if you're looking at this right now and you're like, oh, I got to get it, I got to get it. This is, I'm telling you, this is the exact same emotion that I had when Bitcoin went up from 8,000 to 10,000 to 12,000 to 13,000 and on and on and on, right? Um, you can do it, but who knows when it's going to topple. And I'm just gonna. I'm here to tell you right now that I mean, Chainlink to me, it could be a hundred dollar coin, could be a two hundred dollar coin. I have no idea. Um, but who knows when that's gonna happen? So if you're gonna FOMO in and you're gonna get in there, like you know what's going to the moon? Is this really the time? Did you do all the analysis? Did you take a look at what's going on? Did you think to yourself, okay, there is so much demand for this right now? It's not in a speculative uh, uh, asset. It is just it has to be used, and everybody has to have it. It's as essential as water. If you think it's like that, then sure, go ahead and, and uh, you know sign up and grab some. But I'm telling you from experience, uh, tomorrow it could go down, and you could be like, wow, I just bought it for what is it, twelve fifty, and now it's eleven dollars. So I just lost a big chunk. And, um, you know, that's, that is how it is. I can tell you right now, it is always better. Even if you believe in the project, it sucks to sit there and be like, ah, you know, I just lost 10% overnight. Uh, so that is always a, a bummer of a deal. You know, it'll go up at some point, but you still have to wait the whole time. So, I mean, if, uh, if you as an investor are okay with that, go right ahead. I'm just trying to tell you my experiences, but of course you're welcome to do whatever you want to do. Anyhow, Cardano, uh, 15 cents maybe from that Bitfinex listing. So uh, we'll see. SV, don't know why it's in the top 10. Still there. No idea. Litecoin, Binance Coin, Crypto.com. Uh, everything's looking pretty good. Oh, Tezos up 8%. Fantastic. And there's one. Uh, VeChain is up, and I think it's because of that uh, partnership. Wow, 2 cents. Not too shabby. But um, there's another one uh, that has caught my attention, and it's called Band because people have been talking about it as far as what's going on with um, Chainlink. So, band, we're going to go into that uh, briefly, but it is another article and is another one that looks pretty good. So, uh, it's one of those things where it's like, hmm, this might be a alternative. Anyhow, let's break into today's top story. So, first up, uh, this is the concerning part. 100 addresses own 83% of total Chainlink supply, but the Marines don't mind. And um, sure, when we talk about this thing and as things start to go up, I can I start to understand the mentality of the Bitcoin maximalist. 
And I'm going to, I'm going to get in that a little bit, but uh, here's what the article states. The volume of daily transactions on Chainlink, Google Trends, active addresses, and price gains are at their all-time highs, serving as critical bullish signals that could take Link as high as 1337. That sounds pretty good. I personally think it's going to go much, much higher than that in the future. Don't know when that is, but that is just a uh, prediction. In less than, and then it talks about Link whales are good for Chainlink's future. How often have you heard that phrase? Whales are good for this cryptocurrency's uh, adoption. Um, it might be, and uh, we'll get into it right now. So in less than two years, Link, Link has risen to be the ninth biggest crypto by market cap, up from position 120 in mid-2018. And back then, you could pick it up for you know 43 cents, 33 cents, something like that. It was pretty cheap. Data by analysis firm Glassnode indicated that the top 1% Link addresses now own up to 78% of the link balance. And that's a pretty huge uh, increase. So yeah, that's pretty concerning. I mean, if you have the top 1%, the whole thing of um, cryptocurrency is the whole process of decentralization. So you have a top 1% of addresses, you're like, hmm, that may not be a great thing. And they start to talk about different comments uh, throughout the Twitterverse. One person says, don't tell Chainlink holders the top 100 addresses, hold 83% of the supply. And then somebody says like this, and I thought it was an interesting way, way to say things. And they said, they can't, for, for all these whales, they're talking about this, for all the whales that are out there and all these 100 addresses, they can't dump at once or screw themselves. Their wallet balances continue to grow while the exchange balances plummet and we have fewer weak hands. It's easier for price to pump. This is all good. If you're insinuating they can dump the market, I don't agree. And I got to tell you, I can see... I can see both views, right? I mean, the whole thing about decentralization, we need to have this in the hands of the major of the, of the majority, not the minority. Because when we have in the hands of the majority, usually the wisdom of the crowd wins out. Usually, right? That's that's the whole process. However, when you have something like this, when it's in a very centralized part of a hundred and this is another thing. It's wallets. It's not people. It's wallets. So we don't know the entities that are behind those wallets. So, I mean, it could be some uh, huge type of conglomerate. Who knows? But if you have a lot of people or a lot of entities that, that own uh, a limited amount, it could get very dangerous. However, I take a look at, at both sides and I say, well, maybe this isn't a bad thing. Maybe it's because uh, if we have just these super strong hands, they're like, hey, we're going to clamp this down. And we're not going to, you know, release this into the the ecosphere for people to buy up. And we're going to hold on to it because uh, when there's less uh, supply and there's a huge amount of demand, what happens? The price usually goes up. Same thing with diamonds. Diamonds, if they wanted to just release, um, you know, De Beers and all those different huge, huge companies, want to release all their diamonds and just dump on the market, the price would tank. What they do is they just hold everything in, in reserve and they go, oh yeah, we have these nice, you know, Tiffany cut diamonds and, and there's this many carrots, whatever else. It's not because they have a limited uh, supply. They have a lot of supply, a huge amount of supply, but they hold everything back. That is one side. And of course, the other side we talked about is like, hey, uh, if you need to get it out to everybody. And when I was thinking about this, I started to think about uh, the Bitcoin maximalists that are out there. And I started to go to myself, holy smokes, is this happening to me right now? Is this happening? The same thing that happened to the, these these uh, people who were early adopters of Bitcoin, where they got in at like, you know, a buck, two bucks, five bucks. And then it went up to like, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. So when you make a, a good choice or, you know, just a lucky choice or whatever you want to call it, you start to think about, well, all the different um, uh, competition out there, I don't want that to win because I hold this asset. So I'm going to poo-poo and everything else, right? The same thing with the with the band protocol. I know people have told me about that. And today I just, just took a look at it because I'm like, you know what? Am I becoming one of those maximalists that I was always complaining about? You know, talking about like, you know, Chainlink's the only one. <laughs> Chainlink's the only one. It's awesome. It's an oracle. It is an oracle. But there's always going to be something else that, that comes out there. So... It's one of those things where I have to keep an open mind and I have to keep myself in check and not be one of those people who's like, no, no, this is the only way to do things. You have to do it this way. This is the project and there's nothing else out there. I think that is a short-sighted view and I'm hoping, uh, I'm trying to keep myself uh, away from actually being that person.
Lastly, I will just say this, a recent report by Into the Block say that 100% of Chainlink addresses are currently profitable. And right now, 100% of addresses are profitable because this is an all-time high. So, I mean, <laughs> I mean, whatever you whatever you bought at, if you were if you bought at uh, $12.37, you're profitable. So, we'll see how it all goes, but I mean, real quick, if you take a look at Chainlink and you take a look at uh, the, the history, I mean, you could have picked it up for super cheap back in just oh, just two years ago. 59 cents, here we are. Pretty flat trajectory. Then a little, then a big spike, three bucks, like, eh, and just down, and it goes down. So even, even at, well, in March, $2, that's pretty good. But there was very few people that were buying at that point because of the big dip. And then we just had this, uh, this big, huge, is parabolic and you take a look at that and we take a look at the band protocol so band protocol if you're not familiar with it it is also an oracle and it has jumped up massively in the last two weeks and right now it is ranked 50 and i need to do a deep dive into this because it looks pretty interesting the total supply 100 million circulating supply is 20 right now which opposed to chain link you're looking at a max supply of 1 billion with a circulating supply right now of 300 and 383 million. So when we take a look at those types of things, we're like, okay, that's just one aspect of it. But you know, you really have to take a look at, you know, who is it, who are the people behind this? What is the team doing? How active is the community? And on and on and on. So I haven't done my due diligence. However, I can tell you this, to get in the top 50, uh, you must be doing something right. And especially for oracles, I've always talked about it. All the smart contracts, they're going to need an oracle. They're going to need to pull that data out from somewhere because with everything on, on the blockchain, you have to have external data to verify everything else. So if ban is one of those, it'd be something to, interesting to look at. Anyhow, let's move on. Next up, when I first read this this first sentence, I thought they were talking about tomato coin. It says world's th third largest pasta producer adopts VeChain. I was kind of disappointed, but what are you going to do? And DNV GL's infection risk management solution. So this is interesting because as time goes on, I think these types of protocols, these types of things are going to have to be implemented, uh, especially with the coronavirus. Uh, keep It just keeps re-emerging. Re and it's a virus. And from what different scientists have said, it doesn't matter. I don't. I don't uh, necessarily hold anybody's feet to the fire as far as like the belief of the coronavirus. Um, whether you believe that it exists or not, um, I, believe, I believe it does exist, so whatever. But uh, you have to take a look at what is going on with the economy as opposed to it being a reality or not. It doesn't that, that is irrelevant. What has happened with the economy? So if you take a look at this type of thing, you have to think about yourself as like, well, what? how many things did we have to do to actually get back to square one. I think this is the first step. So Italy's Di, Di Checho, the world's third largest producer of pasta. I know I destroyed that. So uh, in the comment section, tell me uh, uh, how to pronounce that. Has officially adopted MyCare, a solution built by DNVGL on the VeChain Thor blockchain. As a result, it becomes the first major Italian food company to integrate the solution at a time when the COVID-19 pandemic is proving to be a hard nut to crack. So they state, my care will be used as a methodology for the evaluation of measures taken to guarantee the safety of employees and operators from the zoonotic virus or the coronavirus. When I first saw this this part here, I thought they were tracking the product itself, which made sense is you know what what we all hear about as far as V chain, which you know it is there for uh, supply chain verification and also to uh, combat counterfeits counterfeits counterfeit bags counterfeit nike shoes counterfeit food counterfeit i mean baby formula anything you want to think about uh that's what it's there for but i never thought about the prospect the criteria of looking at the, the uh, uh employees and operators to make sure that they're actually uh following the guidelines that has been set forth by either uh the industry itself or the government itself for the safety uh, as far as like the coronavirus. So that's an interesting prospect. Moving on, it says, unlike most companies, they shut down amid the coronavirus pandemic. DiCaccio didn't, being an essential provider, supplying Italy and the world with Italy's signature food, pasta, the company is implementing measures to prevent contagion. Failure may see their operations disrupted. Which makes sense. If you cannot control the outbreak of a virus in your uh, manufacturing plant, you have to shut the plant down. This has happened with Amazon. This has happened with other businesses. So if they can't follow guidelines and then prove to the government that, hey, we're doing the right things, um, 
you know, they might get shut down. So that makes a lot of sense. Why wouldn't they just partner with uh, somebody like VeChain when they can, you know, regulate everything and go, okay, this is what we're doing. And here's the data to prove it. So to get Joe's, I know I'm saying that wrong. Internal protocols have been approved and certified by DNVGL, one of the world's leading certification bodies and a leader in digital business insurance. For the uninitiated, in 2018, DNVGL bought a stake in VeChain as it looks to use a transparent blockchain to develop digital assurance solutions. And I actually forgot about that. So um, you've got huge companies buying into VeChain, cryptocurrency, digital assets, and saying to them, we believe in what you guys are doing. We see you as the future. We're going to put a big chunk of money into your organization, and you're going to lead us into the stratosphere. So when you see something like this, you're like, hmm, I can see why everybody talks so positively about VeChain. Makes a lot of sense. Commenting, Vicente Sopante, the insurance manager quality and self-control systems of the Quecho said to make sure we have reached adequate levels of safety and to be able to give our operators and collaborators evidence of our commitment and the suitability of the procedures put in place. We asked DNVGL to verify their correct application and effectiveness, being the first Italian agri-food company to adhere to my care methodology is a great satisfa satisfaction. So think about it this way. Moving forward, we don't know what's going to happen with this virus. But if you take a look at the, the titans of industry, uh, the big types of corporations, uh, especially like for, for, for supply chains and manufacturers, if they can prove that, hey, the, the product that is going from our warehouse into your home is safe because we follow X, Y, and Z, and you can verify on the blockchain, how many of you would say, you know what, I'm going to pick brand this brand over brand X? And not only that, if you can have uh, the government who comes in and says, you know what, we, we need to make sure that everything is going uh, well, because, you know, the different things as far as testing goes with the coronavirus, we, you know, we need to make sure that these things are in place. Sure, just track it right here. Here is proof. We have everything there and you can verify on the blockchain. Thanks so much. How many other companies are going to have to use something like this or exactly this? So... Let me know what you think in the comments section, but I got to tell you, VeChain looks pretty positive right now. Let's move on. Last up, this will be fast, Bitfinex Liz Cardano. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's that's the whole story. I mean, you just read the the, the title and that's about it. Um, I got to tell you, Cardano is one of those things where I think if it was on more platforms and you could actually take it off that platform, uh, it would be a little, little bit higher priced right now than what it is. I, I guarantee being in the top five. That's just my thinking. But uh, of course, some people hate Cardano. I don't know why. I think it's a great project, but uh, here we are. The only thing I'll, I'll make mention of this is Bitfinex CTO uh, Paolo Arduino was also quick to comment on the matter with a statement claim, claiming there has always been interest within our community for us to offer ADA pairings. And at the, and at the historic time for the Cardano blockchain, there is more demand than ever before from the blockchain community for reliable and trustworthy exchange uh, trading. Great. So all they're saying is like, look, a lot of people want to make money, so we're going to give it to you. We do what the customer wants, right? Other exchanges are like, no, 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 we're going to do what we want, and uh, we're going to invest into it heavily first, and then we'll offer it to you suckers. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Maybe that's not how they do it, but sometimes that's, why, that's how it feels. And um, I mean, as far as Cardano, I, I get this question a lot. Where can I buy it? Because a lot of places, uh, especially in America, there's only so many places you, you can get it to. So like for me, uh, I use Voyager and we talked about this uh, ad nauseum. And if you're looking for Coinbase alternatives, uh, there's the exchange of wallet fees, uh, different. Uh, it's, it's a spreadsheet that I created uh, in Google and you can find it uh, in the link, which looks like this. And it's in the description of every one of my videos. You can check it out. And uh, it's got everything that I've ever used or, or am currently using. And Celsius and Voyager are pretty much my one-two punch right now. But the problem with Voyager is that you there's, there's certain cryptocurrency digital assets you can actually take off the platform into your ledger so you have control of the private keys. And Cardano is not one of them. So just so you're aware of that. I mean, there's a lot of them that, that they can use, but you just can't. I'm, tr I'm probably going to interview the CEO and ask him that question. Like, why do you not allow that yet? I mean, I think I know the answer, you know, as far as liquidity and all those things, but I just want to see like what, what's going on. I wish they could, they could just do them all, but uh, I guess they can't. So if you're looking for Voyager, it's, it's super simple, but you can't take it off as far as Cardano. Other ones you can't, you can't do some Kraken. Uh, I use Kraken because uh, I'm in America and you can take those off of the platform. And then also you can use the Atomic Wallet. I know a lot of people love the Atomic Wallet. I just, 
I haven't gotten into it. So uh, you can use some of those. And that's about it. So look, I know this is a quicker video. Uh, tonight it's Saturday. What are you going to do? So things going on. But uh, before we take off, I just want to say thanks to all of my uh, members who have joined up. Um, in the bottom corner, there's a, there's a join tab. It's you don't get anything special. It's just like a tip. It's like a buck ninety nine. So everybody who's joined up recently, I give uh, random shout outs and just want to say, you know, welcome. So David Griffiths, Sam Keats and Sergeant Crypto. Hey, Sergeant Crypto's got a, a YouTube channel. You should check it out. It's pretty interesting. Uh, Bill Austin. Uh, what do we got? Uh, Sui. Who else? Uh, Noel Flippin' Vegas. Some other guy. I am not I, Mr. Black. Uh, Barry Belasco. Uh, Randy. <laughs> Randy Jism, that guy. And then uh, uh, Medic. So look, uh, thanks everybody who has uh, signed up. If you like these types of videos, there's gonna be two more that are gonna just pop up on your left and right. I have no control over them. Uh, YouTube picks them for you. So I have no control over that. Just like I have no control over the cruddy ads that you see that are usually spam filled, I have no control over that. That's all YouTube. If you have a problem with them, go talk to YouTube. They're the guys you need to complain to. I have nothing to do with it. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next